Good morning and welcome to American Lutheran Church. For those of you who are worshiping via the internet, welcome. For those worshiping via community access, we're glad to have you worshiping with us today as well. We have been worshiping online steadily for 12 weeks now. And at last, we are inching back into our sanctuary worship times. So much has changed in the world in those 12 weeks and since we last gathered. But step by step, we're pressing forward. And together, I say thanks be to God for that. One step backwards. You remember that little bit of storm we had on, what was it, Wednesday night? Wednesday or Thursday night when we got three and a half inches of rain? Well, we also got a power surge with that, which knocked out two of our projectors. So you notice we have just one projector going today. We're waiting for power supplies to repair those two projectors. So that was one setback, but we'll get past that. Thank you for all of those who are practicing social distancing and keeping the three chairs between family units and those who are wearing masks, it's very much appreciated. Thank you to the ushers for helping us get seated and situated this morning. Um, this morning we are going to ask you to add Paul Langseth to your prayers. Paul has had kind of a challenging couple weeks and he's had a challenging time yet to come but he should be home um, hopefully on Tuesday and he'll have a time to rebuild his strength. We also want to be praying for a young man by, by the name of Mitch who was injured in a boating accident over the uh, Memorial Day weekend, I believe it was, but recently. So please keep him in your prayers as well. I know we're coming back into sanctuary worship earlier than many of our sister churches. And we want to keep our sanctuary open. To make that happen, though, we strongly encourage you to wear a face mask. And that's why I stand in front of these shields. It's not because my sermons have become so inflammatory that I need bulletproof shields. <laughs> Although I might touch on that today, we'll see. It's simply because when you preach, your voice is projecting much more forcefully. And so it's for your protection that I do this at this point in time. It's to, these masks, all this, is to protect our brothers and sisters. It's an act of love. It doesn't feel comfortable. These things are not fun to wear. They get hot, but thank you. So um, hats off this week to our DIY do-it-yourself day camp. Man, Kristen had to come in yesterday. We had sent out all the kits, and all of a sudden we need more. So we got that all going. That's taken off. Please keep our families and kiddos in our prayers as they do their do-it-yourself day camp. Um, now with a word about our new normal, I'm going to ask for Sylvia to give us some heads up. Good morning. As the uh, research continues, one of the things that is uh, a problem right now is with the, the aerosol thing is the singing. And it breaks my heart to tell you this, but at this point, we can't have congregation singing. We do have, this morning, we have Dia and Sherry leading music. It will be up on the screen. And so even though you can't participate in singing, I invite you to hum along or whisper the words or go home this afternoon and watch the show on YouTube and sing along then, or just simply simply meditate as you listen to someone sing. Um, hopefully this is a very, very temporary thing for us, but at this point we discourage singing. Um, the second thing I want to talk about today is that we are still going to be going to the banquet, and um, that will be on July 1st. And Stacy is not here today, but if you are interested in going, the times and slots and numbers are up there. I'm honestly not sure how many are signed up right now, but I do know there's room for more. And so you can call or text Stacy uh, by tomorrow or tomorrow to, to sign up for that. I think that's it for me. Okay. I have a question. How many of you here know what the banquet is? Is this most everyone? Okay. If you don't know, we talk about faith being not just words but deeds. And the banquet is a place where we feed people in need. It's over in Sioux Falls. And so we go over there together to help feed people. 
So if you want to make a difference in your faith, not just talk about it, but do something, the banquet is a good opportunity. Okay, moving on. We're looking forward to soon. We're looking forward to soon introducing our drive-in service outdoors, and where you'll be able to not worry about mass, and you'll also be able to sing your hearts out inside your car. That will be at 8 a.m. Uh, once we get started. We're just waiting for one last piece of equipment. And we'll also be using this piece of equipment to create our own drive-in theater here. Um, we have a license to show movies, and so we're going to be showing some movies at church where you'll be able to come to the church and look, turn on your car radio and enjoy a good movie. So that's coming up as well once we get this all together. God willing and equip, equipment cooperating. So just a quick word about these. We're going to do something a little bit different we learned from last week. Um, ushers, did people pick up napkins today with their... Okay, there were napkins. So if anyone wants them for later, what you do with these is you just take your th uh, thumb along that edge, grab the cellophane. What we're going to do is when we have communion today, we'll actually take that piece of bread out and hold it in our hands during the words of institution. And then at the right time, after we meditate on that bread, then we'll ask you to take and eat. And then we'll do the same when it's time for the wine. Um, we will have napkins out because some people said that they, when they popped this open, they spilled a little bit. So just be a little bit careful with that. Okay. Um, good news from Pastor Sandy. She is settled in her place out in, she's just outside of Luck, Wisconsin. So she's just out of luck. <laughs> she is surely out of luck one day this week. Her dog, Molly, found a mud patch. And they had to change the water three times before they got their dog, Molly, cleaned up. But here's actually some much better news. Um, we are, our call committee got together, and they've been meeting with candidates, and they now per have submitted a name to the council as a preferred candidate for our next settled pastor. And the council approved that recommendation and was called for a congregational meeting on July 12th. And that happened to be the same Sunday as our outdoor service. So we're doing, going to do one service that Sunday, and then we'll invite people to come back to church briefly after that service, so we'll do the meeting in the sanctuary here. So we'll do outdoor at the park, come back, reconvene, and then do a call meeting here in the church. It'll also give people time at home to go home if you're doing that, tune in by Zoom. You can get in on Zoom either by voice, uh, through a telephone, or by um, your computer. So our members will have multiple avenues to participate in that meeting. And um, so th that's getting close. Um, we thought about other dates. We could have gone as early as July 1st. We said, eh, Wednesday isn't a great night. And we thought about July 5th, and they said, well, that's the 4th of July weekend. But July 12th is a good date, and I'll be here before you know it. So keep your prayers going as we go forward for that. One last thing, as we head out of worship today, the ushers are going to be ushering us out, and um, from the, they start from the front, and they go to the back. So front row gets ushered. Or is that, or do you start from the back, go to the front? Back to the front, my mistake. Okay, we start from the back to the front. You know what that's gonna mean? Everyone's gonna get to church early and wanna grab a back row so that they can get out first. <laughs> that's fine. I invite you now to please stand as you're able for the brief word for confession and forgiveness. Today, as always, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We'll say this very softly. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bond sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as we enjoy our first song. I love to tell a story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else would do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not seek for rest, to labor and not ask for reward. Accept that, knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Service continues with the reading of the lessons. First reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 13. Jeremiah accuses God of forcing him into a ministry that brings him only contempt and persecution. Yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be a strong protector against his enemies and commits his life into God's hands. Here is the reading. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps we can, he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, though for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, Psalm 69, verses 7 through 18. It is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. When I stumbled, my soul was fasting. They insulted me for doing so. When I made sackcloth my clothing, I became a byword to them. I am the subject of gossip for those who sit in the gate, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. At an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, Answer me. With your faithful help, rescue me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me, or the deep swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. We're going to have fun with something this morning in just a second here. But as we get ready for this morning's um, gospel, Jesus warns his disciples that ministry in his name will meet with opposition. However, he assures them that they need not fear, for the truth will come to light. Life is found in Christ. For those of you on this side, I direct your attention to that back screen. You'll be able to enjoy it and see what's going on. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. 
If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to Turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have a question for you. Does God play favorites? Does God love some people more than others? No, not at all. But even so, some people think God should play favorites. Some people think that if we're good Christians, then everything should go well for us. They think that life for good Christians should be a walk in the park. But we know that's not the case. Things don't always go well for us. Even in our families and churches, things don't always go right, and sometimes we even fall into conflict. So does that mean that God doesn't love us? No. In fact, quite the opposite is true, which is why Jesus offered the words that we have in today's gospel lesson. These are words for tough times, times of conflict, times when things are not going right, times when we wonder, why is God letting this happen to me? Now, granted, the why question is a fair and honest question, and the Bible encourages us to be honest with God. That is why there's so many examples in the Bible of people crying out to God, why me? Psalm 69, which we just heard, is the one example. Do you know that one-third of the psalms are the why me psalms? Why is this happening? Jeremiah, which was our first lesson, is another example. And the whole book of Job is just like it. The Bible is chock full of people 
crying out to God in confusion and despair. So there is nothing wrong with going to God with all our confusion and our fear and despair. There's nothing wrong with us raising our complaints before God. The Bible invites us to be honest with God and each other. But we also have to honestly listen to what God says in lessons like our gospel for today. In this lesson, the first point Jesus had to make is that bad things happened to him. People went after him. And if they went after Jesus, they shouldn't, we should not be surprised if they come after us. Where this was all coming from was our Lord's good news was not always welcome. The powers that be did not appreciate it when he challenged their hypocrisy or rocked their comfortable boat. They did not like it when our Lord's miracles, his genuine acts of kindness, his compassion for others, the outcasts even, cast them in a bad light. So they went after Jesus. They launched a smear campaign. They tried to find nicknames to hang on to him, like the great Satan. They tried to shut Jesus up and shut him down. That is what they did to Jesus, and he warns us to expect the same. If we are faithful, there will be times when we rock the boat, and people will come after us, and they will attack us in the same way they attacked our Lord Jesus. Now, that's not exactly cheery news or encouraging news, but then Jesus went on to say in verse 26, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid? Now that's a pretty tall order when we, when we are under attack. I mean, considering what they did to Jesus, are we really prepared to face the same? And yet, that is our call. But with that call comes words of comfort. Do not fear. Do not fear those who can kill the body but can't kill the soul. After all, what's the worst they can do? Jesus knew what we would be up against. But, all, but he also knew all our worst enemies could do is take our lives. They can't touch our souls. For souls are held and protected by a God who has numbered the hairs of of your head. Now, to be honest, I pray with some confidence that we will never face the challenges of Christians faced in Sudan. Many of our people in Worthington who came from Sudan could tell you horror stories of what it was like to be a Christian. Same thing goes in North Korea. The odds of us facing such challenges are vanishingly small. And yet there are times when taking our pace seriously can lead to conflict with neighbors, family, and friends. That's also something we don't like to talk about. And that's why we try to avoid conflict by keeping faith private. Now, how many of us heard growing up three things you don't talk about when companies in the house? Sex, politics, and religion. Those are the golden rules for keeping peace. It's one of the unwritten rules. But what do we do when that rule keeps us from sharing the life-saving faith and hope that is ours in our Lord? Will we deny Jesus for the sake of harmony and peace? Will we deny others the invitation to eternal life for the sake of harmony and peace? Jesus said, everyone who therefore acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Verse 33. 
But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So can we be secular Christians living a private faith that does not speak to the world? Can we be secular, secular Christians who keep faith private for fear of causing offense? It's not possible. Not without denying Christ. But then how do we deal with these hot-button topics? And Lord knows we got hot-button topics these days. Number one, we remember this. Don't be surprised, Jesus said. This is not heaven. Heaven is coming. God's victory is coming. But until that victory is won, conflict and suffering will continue as Satan, the world, and our own sinful desires battle against God's will for our world. Number two, you can't duck the battle. When it comes to Jesus, we are either for him or against him. There is no neutral option. We cannot pretend we are Switzerland when it comes to matters of faith. If we do not acknowledge Jesus publicly, by word and by deed, we are denying Jesus publicly, by word and by deed. Number three, you're not alone. You cannot imagine how precious you are in God's sight. Parents, you know this well. You know what it's like to love your kids on this Father's Day. Fathers, you know what I'm talking about. You know times when you've seen your son, or your daughter hurting, and you had done anything in your life you could to take that pain away. As deep as a father's, a good father's love is for their child, God's love is so much more brazenly, blazingly brilliant than that. You are loved, even to the hairs of your head being counted. You're not alone. You're precious. And that's why St. Paul went on to write, No temptation has seized you except what is common to all people. And God is faithful. And God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, God will always provide a way out so that you can stand and withstand that temptation. Number four, and this is a strange one, not all conflict is bad. In fact, when I have young couples come to me and we're getting to know each other, I say, so how do you guys handle arguments? If they say, oh, we never argue, the first thought that comes to my head is, A, I'm not sure these two are ready to get married <laughs> because they haven't dealt with real life yet, or B, they got bad case of denial. And I'm not talking about the river. So anyhow, Jesus said, conflict will come. I did not come to earth bring peace, but a sword. He knew that God's truth and love would be resisted. And it would create conflict. For as St. Paul writes, sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit desires what's contrary to our sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other. So you do not do what you want. If you ever found yourself saying, why on earth did I do that? Or why do I keep doing that? That's that battle that's going on inside of you. Differences, but St. Paul went on to write something very interesting. He went on to write that the differences between us and our disagreements and our conflict help reveal which of us have God's approval. Now, these days, people are not entering into dialogue with each other when they disagree. Instead, we go find people that agree with us. 
But then how do we know if we might not be the one who's gone off and left field or right field someplace? It's only when we talk to each other and challenge each other that we can grow closer to God's truth. Now, in our sinfulness, we all make mistakes. But when we bring our differences out in the open, it helps in our search for God's truth. When we do not, things, when we do not bring things out in the open or only seek out those who agree with us, it just keeps digging us into a deeper and deeper hole. And that's why when I watch the news, I don't just watch CNN or Fox or CBS or ABC or Reuters or AP. I look at all of them to try and get a balanced picture of what's going on out there in the world that we live in. Number five, our ultimate loyalty belongs to Christ. Jesus said in verse 37, Whoever loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In short, God demands our ultimate loyalty above everything. In this eternal battle for good and evil, there is no middle ground. You can't be a part-time Christian or a half-hearted Christian. That just doesn't work. It's an all-or-nothing affair. But here's the best news. God's going to win. Number six. Luther wrote in the small catechism, God's kingdom will come whether or not we pray for it. But in the Lord's Prayer, we ask that we might be part of that kingdom and of its coming. Will it always be easy? No. Will there be times when we feel like we are in over our head? <laughs> Definitely. Is there any reason to fear? No. For you are held in the palm of God's hand, and God will provide a way through whatever comes your way. God will provide a way out. God will see you through. So keep the faith, be strong, and may the peace and strength of God see you through all the way to eternal life. Amen. glows on in endless song above us lamentation I catch the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. 
the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Please stand with me as you're able. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expanse of God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God, providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the will of all who care for birds and their habitats. Direct all who work in the agricultural research industries. To provide food for our daily bread. Hear us, O God. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others around the world. Especially this day, we remember our National Guard troops from Minnesota here, including the 700 preparing to deploy again. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O God. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O oh God. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to nurture and love as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Praying God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who died, especially the nine who died at the Mother Emanuel Church, at the hands of a racist. Increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we pray for those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit this day. We lift up especially Paul Langseth and Mitch. We also pray for Dolores, Carol, Rich, Darlene, Bob, Erlen, Vern, and Dee, Kara, Carolyn, and John, Jill, Kevin, and Sherry, Martin, Laura Lee, and John, Joanne, Rochelle, Ordell, Elfie, John, Joe, Dorothy, John, and Tim, 
Pastor Phil and Pastor Janet, Ron and Arla, Lily, Nick, and all those we name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And I ask you to open the pack, take the bread and hold it. If you're having problems, just bring your thumb along the edge and the tab, shut up and I'll lift that cell phone. Our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. Gently peeling back the cap on the juice below. In the same manner, also after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and drink. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for refreshing us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that through this gift you strengthen us in body, soul, and spirit, in faith and hope and love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. You may be seated for our last song. of God our Heavenly Father and the grace of Christ the risen Son and the fellowship of God the Spirit keep our hearts and minds within His love unto Him rain from the depths of earth to the heights of heaven we declare the name of the lamb once slain christ eternal
which passes understanding and this grace which makes us what we are and this fellowship of his communion make us one in spirit and in heart and to him be praised for his glorious reign from the depths of earth to the heights of home we declare the name of the lamb once slain christ eternal the king of kings this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it go in peace serve the lord thanks be to god